Yes, a masked figure with a PowerPoint with the speed of light. An ironic and self-mocking Hyo Silver. Yes, the masked professor is on the video once more. Today, we will be doing uh, the first of our presentations for Friday, April the 10th, for Lean Production. Since I'm here by myself, I think I can safely dispense with the uh, mask. You'll notice that the uh, title on our presentation is Organizing Your Business for Success. Um, what it really is, is a presentation about success. Um, uh, I was asked to use a different title uh, so that people would understand better what's going on. All right, and here's my resume, who cares? All right, so let's return to some of the original principles of Lean. Lean, we're doing more with less. We're using less time, we're using less space, less human effort, less machinery, and less material. While we give the customer, customers what they value, very important. All right, we do lean because time is our irreplaceable resource. Once a second goes by, it can never come back. That's very important in business because lead time is the key to our customer's satisfaction, right? You don't want to order something and be told, well, you'll have it in six months. You want to be told, oh yes, it will arrive at your doorstep tomorrow in the case of COVID by, uh, uh, isolation or in the case of, uh, 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 of being in a store, you want them to say, yes, here it is right now. Always we're looking for waste elimination. That means we can make more profit without raising the price. And that's important. Customers are price sensitive, right? There's a reason that Hyundai outsells Rolls Royce. The price is one that is affordable, where a Rolls Royce, very, very expensive. You would literally be paying it off all your life. So, to get that waste elimination, we do continuous improvement. So, that fuels our extra profit from getting rid of waste. All right, so here are the, some of the bedrock principles that lean manufacturing rests on. First of all, value is defined by the customer. The old paradigm of the customers will buy whatever we shove down their throats is not one that is a hugely successful business strategy anymore. We always want to have waste elimination in our processes and build a continuous improvement culture where everybody from the very bottom to the very top is thinking about how we can improve our processes. We want to go after quantifiable goals. We never want to just say, oh, we want to improve sales. We want to say, we want to improve sales by 10% or 25% or whatever is uh, a reasonable figure for our particular kind of business. So we get Everybody in the enterprise working together. 
we want management to support and help improve and employee involvement so that we end up with a shared vision by all the employees, whether they're management or whether they're uh, the people that sweep up. As part of that, we always think of, of it in terms of putting together our paradigm in terms of the House of Lean production. Our foundation is 6S, uh, safety, sort, straighten, standardize, scrub, sustain, which of course I'm going to be talking about today. The next Part of that is we have to have level work production. We can't have one guy working until he drops while the person next to him is just barely loafing along. Our roof is held up by two pillars, just in time, where we have the right parts at the right time, in the right quantity, kitted and ready for production. Um, kidding is very important, the, and the more complicated our process is, the more important it becomes. The other pillar is Jadoka. Jadoka is a set of principles that allow us to go forward uh, in a better way. So we have automation, machines stop if they are going to make a mistake. We have mistake proofing. In our processes, we look for ways to eliminate even the possibility for error. Visual management, so that we reduce the human factors load on the people uh, who are doing production. All of this supports our roof, which is focus on the customer. We're trying to achieve low price, high quality, and a short lead time. The old paradigm was that you could only have two out of the three at any given time. With lean, we say no. We are going to keep working until we achieve all three. Inside our House of Lean, we have to have flexible trained employees. Our employees have to be not specialists on just one job, but they have to be able to switch between different jobs and different production quickly. That goes along with standard work. We always do the same job using the same methods and the same process. That has to be within uh, our tack time. In other words, we have a beat, a time within which each process must be completed in order to meet demand. Uh, we have to have material, of course, in any process. That means that we also have a standard amount of work in process. So we don't have giant piles one time and almost nothing another. We have a consistent amount of work in process that keeps inventory low, and that means that we're keeping our costs lower. That goes into one piece flow. Again, we don't create giant stacks of paperwork or uh, assemblies needing attention. One piece flow is the most efficient way. We have to have right size machines. We don't want a behemoth machine uh, that will do 10,000 uh, parts an hour 
if what we need is 10 parts an hour. Right? If we need 10,000 parts an hour, get the behemoth! But if we need 10 parts an hour, we want the machine that is the size that will do that. Now maybe a little bit more. Maybe at times we, uh, <coughs> pardon me, uh, maybe at times we have to, uh, almost swallowed my uh, candy there, maybe at times we have to uh, uh, produce more uh, because customer demand is up, right? But if we need 10 parts per hour in the ordinary scheme of things, we probably don't want a machine that will produce more than 20 parts an hour. All of this must be buttressed by total productive maintenance. In other words, our machines, the regular maintenance needs to be done by the people who are operating the machines. They know the machines best. They know when something is going wrong. All of these things then feed into a Six Sigma quality paradigm where we are making very few errors and as a result we're not passing defects along to the customer. All right, so in our lean tool bag, we have 6S. That's always the foundation for further improvement in our processes. Does this? No. All right. We want Kaizen events. And they are just, Kaizen means, uh, is the Japanese for make good or make better. A Kaizen event is just an event to improve something, right? So some of these, actually, um, all of these fall into the paradigm of being Kaizen events. So total productive maintenance event means that our equipment is ready when needed. We go in, we find out what uh, about this machine. How often do filters have to be replaced? How often does this kind of maintenance need to be done? 3P is a redesign of our processes and spaces. Uh, and I have been wanting for a long time to create a specific 3P presentation. Um, and boy, it looks like with the coronavirus, this is the time. Standard work. This is an event where we make sure that we're using the same methods, the same processes uh, for doing the same thing every time. Value stream mapping, we want to know where the value is added, uh, okay, and can't remember if I already have a value stream um, mapping presentation, but that's another one that it's possible I'll have time to create during this exciting coronavirus time. Single minute exchange of dies for faster changeovers allows us to be more flexible in production and pursue mixed model production, which is our ideal. All right, so before we do the 6S event, there are some things we have to do to make sure that we're ready to go with it. All right, so the first part is we want to capture what is our current use and look of the area, right? So we want to take pictures so that we have a before and after when we do our brief out. We want to draw a layout of the area, and that may be of a whole production line or shop or each individual workspace. With 
that layout, we can make spaghetti charts. We count the amount of equipment. And what are the materials that are needed here? Um, now, these two, uh, these two, excuse me, the amount of equipment and the materials that are needed here, very often we have way too much in an area for what is needed for production. We want to see what is the flow of materials and personnel, how are they moving, who is moving them, uh, when I say they, in this case it's materials, uh, or, or people, but who moves them refers specifically to materials. And where are things stored and where are they going? All right, so one thing that we usually do before a 6S event is we do a 6S audit. Uh, and luckily this is small enough that you probably can't even read it uh, from where you are. Uh, but with safety we want to see and fix problems. We want to fix unsafe conditions if we discover them, damaged equipment or hazards, ergonomic issues. Um, right, we're scoring this on a one to five paradigm. Now, could we score this on a one to ten? Sure, why not? What would it hurt? Sort what is needed and what is not needed. Um, we have unneeded equipment, fixtures, and furniture, uh, unneeded uh, slash old information on the production control boards uh, or on the checklists or other materials that the people are using, uh, unneeded things in the aisles or other spaces, unneeded inventory or supplies. So then we go to straighten, uh, where we're going to organize what's needed. Uh, so items are uh, that are not put away should be uh, counted. Areas that are not marked. Inventory limits that aren't marked. Uh, of course, uh, as you know, often with inventory, we want to create that Kanban space where only one unit will fit at a time. All right, our sweep is clean the area and obvious markings. We want to make the area squeaky clean. The, uh, the old paradigm about uh, factory work or production is that it's uh, uh, dirty. But now, very often, what we want is we want to be uh, having our workers work in white overalls so that if they get dirty, we immediately track down where that is and clean that up. We want to mark our locations for equipment and tools. Um, we want uh, any hazards marked and guarded, safety, uh, uh, safety protocols and safety guards in place. Uh, and we want to label cabinets and other closed spaces. If we have to have something that is closed instead of just being open where we can see what's in there, then we want a label on it, one that can be read uh, from an appropriate distance. All right, so we want to then standardize where we're monitoring to maintain 
our 6S. So we establish what goes where and why it goes there, right? So ordinarily we want point of use, uh, something within easy reach that has to be used a lot. Something that doesn't have to be used that often, we can put outside of easy reach. Uh, we want our standards to be known and visible. Do we have go, no-go equipment? Uh, do, we have, um, uh, do we have our standards posted as far as what we're expecting? and have checklists for who does what and when. There can be a checklist at each workstation uh, that lays out our standard work so that uh, everyone is adhering to the same, same standard. But we also want things like a 6S checklist. Who is going to uh, do the cleanup of the common areas every day? The best paradigm is to have that be a rotating responsibility amongst our personnel. We want to sustain, keep it up and improve. Um, we want to make sure our checklists and standard work are updated, that workers have their 6S training, and Personal items are not out in the production area, but they are put away uh, during the time we're producing. So you'll notice here on this 6S uh, audit, we have uh, a certain date. We score all our points and we add them up at the end, right? So we should see rising scores over time. Um, all right, this is set up so that the highest score you can achieve is a 100. Um, right, that assumes a scoring from 1 to 5. If you score 1 to 10, then the obviously the highest score would be 200. Um, so, we want to see a rising score um, uh, every time we do the 6S audit, we get a better score uh, until uh, we get to a consistent score of above 90. Now, always score very hard uh, when, you, um, uh, when you look at uh, something and you're doing a 6S audit. Uh, uh, right? Don't say, oh, well, it's probably okay, or, um, uh, or anything like that. Right? So they tell us to score one for five or more problems in a category, two for three or four problems, three for two problems, four for one problem, and five for none. All right? I will send you the PDF of this presentation and, uh, and you'll be able to look at that while you're listening to me blather on like this. All right, so when we're talking about spaghetti charts, uh, you've seen this before. A, sp a spaghetti chart is we want a layout of the area uh, it can be just a crude one or one that's very exact and architectural. We want the path of travel on the drawing that makes the travel visual, right? So we have a notional uh, operation here. And I can never remember if I have to uh, hit the start button again to get it going. Oh, I do. <coughs> All right, so our worker goes to the parts storage, storage. He goes back to the workbench to the arbor press. He goes and gets some supplies. He goes up and does some work at the workbench. 
he goes over to the toolbox. From the toolbox, he goes back to the workbench. Uh, then he goes down to the lathe. Uh, from the lathe, he goes back to the workbench. And he goes over to the drill press. Then he goes to the cleaning machine. And then he goes off to give the completed assembly to the inspector. Okay, so um, all together in my notional operation, oh, well, it doesn't say, um, in a further uh, improvement. Uh, I show another uh, little animated uh, slide of, uh, of how this process can be improved. But right now the idea is let's just concentrate on this is the spaghetti chart for the movement of the worker. All right, so we look at Kaizen events and we say we have to focus them on a specific uh, target. We can't just say, oh, we're going to go and improve everything. We need to work on making it toward a particular uh, part of lean that we need to improve right now. So the first one is always the 6S basics. That means we have the necessary items, we have visual management, and we reduce the amount of work in process uh, so that we are carrying less inventory. We do standard work uh, uh, Kaizen events where we redefine the sequence of operations and the methods of operations. A lot of times we can really uh, we can really um, uh, uh, improve a lot just by uh, uh, just by uh, uh, redoing the sequence of operations. We want to get one piece flow where we have no stops or waiting, okay, and that is an event all by itself because it takes a while to get that going. And from there we want to go to a pull system where uh, we have first time quality, just in time, and we link our steps together. Uh, very often in production, steps are not linked. One person is working in isolation. They are not worried about what the person before them is doing, the station before them is doing, or the station after them is doing. All right, I am going to have to pause for a moment uh, because one of my compañeros has sent me a, um, uh, she has sent me a, uh, uh, one of my comp compañeros has sent me a text uh, that apparently there's some kind of urgent crisis. So we will pick up again with doing success uh, here in a little bit.